Hi, this is Bob. I've been finishing up the uh, AA8V Twinplex Regenerative Receiver Project. Really enjoyed this project. I finished winding the coils that plug in. I got uh, two Fillmore Vernier reduction dials for it. I got uh, nice little Bakelite knobs with pointers painted on them and uh, these they came with these little dial plates that go in back that are labeled 0 to 10 the idea is that you could make a little chart and show how to set the dials for receiving different things I've got a I got the uh, coil plugged in there now for 80 meters it's in the middle of the CW band right now. CW means Morse code. Morse code is still used by thousands of amateurs. And it's a lot of fun. It's, uh, it is work to learn Morse code. But uh, an old timer told me once, years and years ago, I told him I was having trouble. I've been trying to learn the code for about two years. He says, can you send like two or three words a minute? And I said, yeah. He said, well, he said, I had, a, I had a technician license. I had to get up to five words a minute at that time to get the technician license. But he says, can you receive and send two or three words a minute? I said, yes, I can. So what I did, what he recommended that I do is, is get on the air and make one contact a day. Contact takes you about 15, 20 minutes usually. The guys get on and they tell each other their names, they tell where they're located, they might say what the weather is, they tell each other what kind of rig they have, they give each other a signal report, and then, and then they say 73's and off they go. Thank each other for having a nice contact. Sometimes when you talk to somebody, you will, you will talk for a long time and have what they call a rag chew, but not very often. Usually it's over in about 15 or 20 minutes. But anyhow, I'm not here tonight to talk about CW, but I wanted to show the uh, regenerative receiver with the labels on, the dials on, and how nice it works. I labeled it with a standard tape type labeler, white tape with black letters. I got these real nice dial plates and knobs real cheap on eBay. There's a number of guys selling those. These came from Hong Kong and they came pretty quick. The uh, Simpson, the Simpson, the Fillmore uh, Vernier dials uh, came from uh, a guy up in, I think it was a lady in fact, up in uh, Michigan, advertised them on eBay. They're used but they look like new. So this is the uh, finished product, and I just wanted to show you guys. And I, it's, I've got it in the uh, CW, or code portion of the band. You notice that the code is rather high-pitched. That's normal with a regenerative receiver. When you get low in frequency, see what happens? That's called lock-on. If the signal is reasonably strong, the uh, regenerative detector will lock onto it. So, it also gets raggedy sounding. Guy calling CQ. KC0C something. Anyhow, I just wanted to show it to you operating. The tuning on code or CW is very sharp and touchy. But it does work good, and with a little bit of skill, you can tune in all sorts of stations.
and I'll put the uh, broadcast band coil back in. It really performs on broadcast. Does a really good job. When you have sleep apnea, traveling can be a real... Meeting relatives this Thursday at Thanksgiving. I'll offer some insight. And right now, you can try Transcend absolutely risk-free for 10... The uh, regenerative receiver here is amazing on broadcast band. And I do more, most of my playing with it on broadcast band. It's a lot of fun. Now I've got a, uh, I just turned it off there. I've got a set of uh, computer speakers plugged into the headphone jack on the radio so that I can play it loudly so you can hear it. This is the power supply that runs it. They actually work a lot better. Regenerative receivers work a lot better operating on batteries because they get pure, nice, smooth DC voltage. You can buy batteries. I could buy batteries for this at the uh, dollar store. You get two 9 volt batteries for a dollar. And uh, you can put uh, nine of those in series and get 90 some volts. And those last a long time. And then for the filaments, for the tube, you can run those off of uh, D-cells. Uh, you would need uh, four of them for six volts for the filaments. So anyhow, it would be uh, really nice to run off of, bat <clears throat> off of batteries too. I'd like to try that sometime, but I do have this little power supply I built and it works really good, so I'm going to use that for a while. It's been a very, very good project, and I just wanted to show you guys how it came out and how it's working. And I really, really like uh, having done this and really enjoyed this. You know, I've been an amateur radio operator for over 60 years now. And I think it's one of the greatest hobbies there is. I think I consider it more than a hobby. I consider it a lifestyle. Uh, most all of my friends are amateur radio operators. And uh, a lot of people think of amateur radio operators as old guys sitting talking on a microphone on an old radio set. And that's, there isn't anything that could be farther from the truth. Because you'll find the amateur radio operators, uh, many of them are doing cutting edge computer work and things like that. They're bouncing signals off the moon. They're talking through satellites. They're using Morse code. There's thousands of uh, amateur operators still using Morse code. And there are so many different facets to amateur radio that you can get into. It's just amazing. Some people go to the mountaintops and put up little antennas and see how far they can talk and do things like that. Some people see how many countries they can talk to. When you talk to other countries that are far away, that's called DX. DX is an abbreviation for distance. So when I say to you, 73s and good DX, I'm telling you, to have good contacts on your amateur radio. So I find it to be a fascinating hobby and I never tire of amateur radio because there's always these different things to get into. I especially enjoy building something like this regenerative receiver or fixing old equipment. I just did another video on fixing a Heathkit IM13 service bench vacuum tube voltmeter. A really good instrument and I really enjoyed fixing that up. It's all very enjoyable and you're doing something that's practical and useful. So with that, I'll say to you all out there, 73's and good DX.